in Ithaca since, I don't even know, way back. But, yeah, they make, like, underwear. You've seen them, right? Uh, I've seen them from your posts, but I think that's about it. Yeah, it's a sick company, dude. They, they're starting to make it all. They make really good underwear, socks, hats, t-shirts. Like, dude, great underwear. Actually, yeah. Great underwear is so underappreciated. Like, if you got a great pair of underwear, man, your day's, your day's set. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that and socks. Some new socks. That's, like, one of the best things ever. <laughs> well, actually, no, I think, do they start off as a sock company? You know, I'm not too sure. I know, okay. I know underwear was, was one of the was ones. pretty, yeah, that was their direction for sure. Oh, nice. Cool, dude. Well, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Um, I'm stoked. Yeah, same, bro. So, I would like to start off as generally like, what is your background? So, like, when did you first get into snowboarding? What was your first? Right yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm stoked to be on here. Thanks for having me. Of course. In the first place. Um, but yeah, so I started snowboarding when I was... Around seven years old, um, my mom took me just out to like a local mountain. And um, were you born and raised in Colorado? Like, what's that? Were you born and raised in Colorado? Born and raised in Colorado. Yep. And uh, started snowboarding here when I was like seven. So, shit, that's crazy. I feel like that's like late for someone who lives in the mountains. <laughs> like, I feel it is. It's late compared to everybody else, dude. Yeah, that's in it now. It's like. I don't know. Everybody I grew up riding with started when they were like three or four or something crazy young. So you're just a quick learner, then I guess. Dang. No, I don't know what it was, man. I guess it's the uh, just that that determination, you know. <laughs> True. Saw everybody else, saw everybody else doing it. I was like, dang, I want to do that. So and that's what kind of started it off. But would you? Yeah, it's been a minute. Would you first start getting like really, really good? Sorry, the garbage trucks coming. Just a sec. It's a lot of oh, no, you're fine. I see some weirdest shit. They come, like, I swear they come. Those guys and the yard cleaning crew, they come, like, every other day. I'm like, can't you guys just, like, fucking do it in one day and call it good? It's annoying as hell. They're, te- they're attentive. <laughs> yeah. To get good Maybe guy. I should be appreciative. Maybe I should, I should be appreciative. But, yeah. <laughs> no, that's funny. Bro, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I started snowboarding when I was seven, and then I think just, like, over the next couple of years, I struggled with it a lot, dude. I think until I was, like... Maybe like fourteen is when I started learning a lot of stuff. Wow! So for seven years you were snow like you were snowboarding and just like failing, basically figuring it out. Yeah, yeah, I definitely struggled for a while. wasn't wasn't, wasn't something I picked up like really quick. I don't think so, if I can remember. Dang! So what was that like then? Like, did you want ever want to quit? Like, we were we thinking about like, dude, I hate this. Like, this isn't. I'm not getting good. Like, I want to be done. Do you ever have any of those did moments in your early days? I, I never did have that feeling because I kind of got into it just to just kind of to have fun and just because I was curious more so. Yeah. So I think for the first few years, I wasn't necessarily putting that pressure on myself to like be be super good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just kind of having fun with it. But I don't know. I think that that's kind of what that goes along with a lot of things. You know, you can't put too much pressure on yourself and. I feel like that just never works out good. I agree, dude. Literally, I feel like that's with anything, like whether, like your business endeavors or I guess any sport. If you take it too, if you take it too seriously, I think that's the beginning of the end of it. <laughs> In a lot exactly. Of ways. So, exactly. Good on you, dude. So, was it, what was the first crazy trick you learned? Oh man, I think, dude. I started off doing a lot of stuff um, in slope style first because I just compete more so in half pipe nowadays. Yeah. Um, but I like to do it all, and I started riding uh, more slope style at first, and that's kind of where I started getting in the bigger tricks. But I don't know. I think first crazy trick I did that I was stoked on when I was young was probably like a, I don't know, some some type of a double cork or on a jump, and I was like Shit. just stoked on that, like <laughs> whether it was a back 10 or a 9 or whatever. But That's crazy. We got, so I'm from – I don't know. I think you know I'm from Minnesota, so we would have like nothing for mountains. So every yeah, every, exactly. Min- every Minnesotan like dreams of growing up in Colorado or like at least when in the winter time because all we have is little uh, valleys to go ski on. So I don't think we have jumps big enough to do double corks or like run like hills yeah. big enough where you can get enough speed to do one. So that's pretty crazy, dude. That's pretty crazy. Dude, yeah, definitely crazy. I've been lucky to grow up in Colorado. I mean, like you're saying, 
the snow is definitely not the same in, out in Minnesota. So <laughs> grateful. Have grateful. You, have, you, have you ever been skiing out in Minnesota? Or snowboarding? Dude, started? I haven't. I haven't, but I've I've been there in the winter time and I've I've witnessed it. And it looks pretty darn fun. Like I've been to I've been to Highlands area. Oh seriously? Okay. Still, nice. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's it's cool over there. Wait, I quick, like it. wait, quick aside. Um, I think I'm, uh, do you know a girl, uh, Alicia Tong? Yeah, so we used to date. No that's way! How, that, that's why I was there. But oh. I saw uh, a quick glimpse of Highland when I was there, and I was sick. Okay, nice. Yeah, I met her, we did like a fashion show together like a while ago, and she, I th- she mentioned that she knew you, um, or that you guys did that's it, sick. but that's kind of funny. Small world, dude, small world. Dude, super small. Um, yeah. So, so when did you start getting on like the pro circuit? Like when, like after you start getting really good, you start doing double corks and shit. <laughs> when did you, did you do? Did you do like the uh, what's it called? Uh, not it's not the do tour. What's what's the one they have within for like development? Uh, yeah, so they have the more, the more amateur series. It's called Revolution Tour. Yeah, Rev Tour. Yeah. Uh, did you yeah, do I did that? those for for a few years, and then I think the first pro event I did was. Uh, the first pro event I did was Arctic Challenge in, I think it was 2014. Mm-hmm. So I'd have been, I'd have been maybe on the house. I don't know when that was, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah, Arctic Challenge. I was stoked to do that. We went out to, uh, went out to Oslo, Norway, and I just got to like basically yeah. hang out with all the greats, and it was just sick, dude. What was that, what was that like, like? to go because you were obviously competing with a lot of people you really looked up to right and were the inspiration for you to like do what you do so what was that like like going out there and competing with them dude that was crazy yeah that was like my introduction to to pro sporting for sure or just like that scene at least so it was different it was definitely different i was like a, a rude awakening for me i think that was the first trip that i ended up like uh <laughs> That was the first trip I ended up maybe partying like a little bit too hard, I think, and I realized like, dude, whoa, <laughs> seriously, like, it feels like these guys are crazy. I gotta turn it back, but it was a good intro. So, do they do they party that hard? Actually, the guys on the team, dude, it was wild, bro. When I was younger, my my introduction to snowboarding was I was just kind of thrown into it. There's no like direction or anybody to tell me like what to do or. I don't know. And it was like right when I was becoming like a, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say like into my later teen years too. So I was also like just curious and kind of crazy. And um, yeah, dude, it's it's savage. I don't know, especially when you're young. Like it's just crazy. But, but it was fun. It was a good time. So what do, you, what do you mean you were thrown into without direction? Like you didn't have like a mentor or like someone to kind of take you under your wing? Or? Well, yeah, just because I was one of the younger dudes and I think. Um, I don't know, hanging around a bunch of older bro dudes that are, you know, <laughs> and they're stuff like they're getting after it, doing whatever they want. So it was definitely a, an eye opener for me being like 14, but yeah. it was sick, dude. I, I'm thankful for it. You know, it's definitely made me who I am today. I think being thrown into all that was like, yeah, structure building. So nice. Yeah. And, and what was it like after, after your first big, or after your first like professional tour, what was it like touring, like uh, as a as a professional athlete? Like, was that and and how did you get your first sponsor? What was that? What was that journey like? Dude, it's been super cool. Um, yeah, just the whole I don't know the whole circuit, all the events and stuff has been awesome. It's usually like the same group of dudes, like twenty or thirty guys that kind of know each other, and um, it's it's super fun. Yeah, it's just basically like. X Games and Detour and like the locks open and um, a couple of the World Cups and stuff when those happen. Um, yeah, dude. And and that's been a blast. I've been doing that for a, a bit now. I got sponsored by Rockstar when I was... It picked me up when I was 16. That was right after uh, um, Red Bull Double Pipe. Okay. That, yep. So that was like I was like 2014, I think. Um, what was that like? Yeah, and then, how, how do they how do they how do they approach you? Or did you have like an agent? They're like, "Yo, we like what you're doing. We want to sponsor you." Yeah, it was actually kind of weird how it went, dude. I 
I was approached by a couple different agents during the event, um, just during like downtime and chill time. And ended up signing with one of the agents who's still my agent now, Steve Ruff. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out Steve Ruff. And then, <laughs> yeah, shout out Steve Ruff. Before we signed, um, I don't really know, dude. I don't know how it went down, but got picked up by Rockstar somehow. I think they were looking for some young guys. I think it was like me and Chase, Josie, and Gabe Ferguson all kind of got on at the same time. Like at, at that, Red, that Red Bull Double Pipe event. Damn. That was kind of where they were swooping in to pick up some kids, so. And you guys all three were on the Olympic team, right, in Pyeongchang? That's kind of um, crazy. Or was Gabe, was Gabe on the team as well? Ben. Oh, Ben. Gabe's ben. Older, oh, wait. So Gabe's the younger one? Gabe's the younger one, yeah. Oh, okay. That's kind of crazy that, that that young, you guys were all on this, you guys were all on the same team together back then, like in a sense, and then were, you know, so many, so many years later, four years later. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's been, it's been a ride for sure. It's been sick. <laughs> And so what's it like traveling, uh, traveling in the, in the do tour? Like you're traveling with a bunch of your friends around the, around the U S and I think around the world too. Right. What is it? Yeah. They used to do, they used to do, uh, an actual tour for do tour, but not just one event. Um, but when we do travel, it's sick, dude. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, you and your boys is, you know, a little click and you get to go to Europe and kind of mess around and just have fun and do your thing. But, um, I don't know. There's a serious side to it, also. Like, especially when events and stuff start coming around, I think um, everybody kind of buckles down. The pressure kind of hits, but totally. dude, for the most part, it's just like, like hanging out with your friends, kind of just vacationing. It's we're pretty darn lucky. <laughs> Damn, so, yeah. dude, that's a life. That's a life. <laughs> yeah. Um, for real, dude. What for real? For real. Dang. Definitely grateful. Yeah, no, that's not. I, Every I feel like every Minnesota kid who's like who's on the slopes, that's like the life they dream of is is becoming a, a pro a pro snowboarder, right, or pro skier. Cause they see yeah, dude. Slopes. I mean, all of us. That's what I dreamed about. Was was becoming a pro snowboarder. Nice dude. And um, so what, what was it like? So you, I mean, you're so now you're on the professional circuit. You're traveling with all your friends, basically living the dream life. Um, what was it like making the Olympic team in in, in Pyeongchang? Cause that's a whole other thing in itself. Cause like to make the to make the um, to make the the professional tour, like you have to be pretty freaking amazing. But to make the Olympic team, like you have to be the best of the best, basically of you know of the of the traveling professional team. So what was that like to make the Olympic team? It was cool. I think you might be giving us a little bit too much credit, but um, <laughs> well, you're, no, too, you're was, too humble, brother. I'm, I'm joking. It was cool though, dude. It was it was awesome. I think. I don't know. Being a part of that crew was cool because it was, I don't know. Everybody that was a part of the team was someone I looked up to for a while, like coming through, coming up through snowboarding. And um, I'd always wanted to go to the Olympics. So that was like a, a huge achievement for me. I was like, boom, stoked. I got that one done just to go was, was huge. And then um, I was just stoked to make finals. <clears throat> so that yeah, was really cool. Just yeah, you all the media and stuff was crazy. And, it was it was a trip. I went out, so when I was there, I I had an uh, accreditation, but uh, I was able to sneak up like super close to the event because the ladies who were like guarding the place were were, um, were Korean and they loved my like blonde hair and blue eyes. So I was like I was like right up next to the 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 gate when or not the gate but the the base of the uh, half pipe when you guys were going. So I was like right yeah, close. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that shit, dude. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy bro that's where we met yeah. i met you there in the uh in the team team usa house yeah dude that was so much fun were you there, was that the night when um what's what's her name the singer lady uh she sings fight song oh uh, what's her name yeah i know you're talking fight about song take back my right song i can't sing but i can't remember wait, there, wait which one is it the fight song girl i can't remember what her name is she's like Take back my life song. This is my fight song. <laughs> I'm looking it up, damn it. I think it's like Sarah Bareilles or something. It's like Kelly Clarkson or something. Rachel Platten. Rachel Platten, that's okay. right. Yeah. She's super cool. I would cool. never get that. Yeah. Dude, it was, yeah, and it's actually, pretty cra- it's actually pretty crazy the kind of people that you meet there. Like, you know, at the bobsled event, I remember I was walking up, and there was like 
there was like three black cars that just pulled up. And I like walked into the thing. And then about three minutes later, um, Ivanka Trump like just walked in to the thing. I was like, yeah. holy shit. Like it's, it's really crazy. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. The caliber of people that come. Yeah. Like this. It's crazy how much attention that event brings. Like if you compare it to all the other events, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. What was it like in the it Olympic? Like, did you clean up in the Olympic village? <laughs> Was it fun? <laughs> no way, man. It was. It was a good time when we were hanging out, but um, no, there was none of that. It was freezing. I didn't want to leave my room at all. It was like so cold. I remember. Yeah, it was pretty cold. Yeah. Um. That was. You know, yeah, it was funny. I don't know if you. Should, I don't know if you. Did you ever watch the show Silicon Valley? Dude, I've seen it. Yeah. There's there's a part in there where he's he's talking to like, the, the guy. He like looks at the company emails. And he's like, there's more, there's basically like more sex happening in the Olympic Village and <laughs> or some shit like that. It was hilarious though. Yeah, I, there's a whole, there's definitely some controversy around that. I think during the Olympics, it gets pretty funny, but it was weird. It was freezing and there was just a bunch of us all crammed into like these little unfinished, like little hotel rooms. It was, it was crazy, but it was definitely a good time. So yeah, can't complain. Yeah, true. Well, uh, yeah. So, so what's next? Like, what's next for for snowboarding? I I saw I know I just saw chases over in in Europe. Are you are you taking the year off or not going with this year? No, I'm getting super hyped up. Um, <clears throat> I actually I just resigned from the U.S. snowboard team, so I won't what? be with those guys this year. No, yeah, I'm uh-huh. just focusing a lot more time on uh, like my nonprofit, just trying to like help people and. Um, I think being a part of the team was just kind of taking away from the time that I, I could put towards that kind of like the extra time that, that it needed, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, but dude, I'm stoked for the season. As far as like snowboarding goes, I'm just hoping that, um, through COVID and everything, we had these events cause that's kind of just our livelihood. But dude, yeah, I'm hope I'm, I'm hoping that happens and I'm, I'm super excited for the season. It's going to be, it's going to be a blast. They're changing the whole Olympic criteria again. So it's like after every, I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying this, but I'm just going to say it. <laughs> after every, I think, or after Christmas, every event will be an Olympic qualifier for snowboarding. Oh, wow. Half pipe at least. Yeah. Um, so that's a little different. And then they're doing like a, an athlete, um, what do they call that? Athlete discretion this year. So like for the fourth spot or for the third spot, the team chooses the team will choose who goes if it's someone who hasn't qualified necessarily through the criteria they'll just uh it's like athletes discretion they get to choose the the last member of the team which is kind of sick putting it kind of in the athlete's hands but i'm stoked man as far as things go for snowboarding that's pretty cool are you are you gonna stay involved with the sport at all like do any commentary or things like that or are you gonna focus 100 percent on your nonprofit? Well, it's actually pretty cool because a lot of the stuff that I've been doing um, relates a lot to snowboarding, mm-hmm. and that's that's kind of just been my main focus. So I started this nonprofit about six months ago. It's called Happy Healthy Brain Foundation, mm-hmm. um, and our goal basically is to just like help people deal with symptoms that they're they're dealing with from hitting their head. So any type of like head injury or cognitive decline, whatever's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I basically gone off and partnered with these technology companies and my main objective right now is to help improve the concussion protocols in snowboarding and skiing. So, um, for example, this company that I'm working with provides really good objective information. So like factual data, yeah. um, to basically track your brain performance and brain health. So what we're trying to do is kind of include more objective data into the concussion protocol. So for instance, instead of it just being like a questionnaire or being asked like by a doctor, like how do you feel this and that? Mm-hmm. It's more like scientific factual data. You're getting numbers and you're getting actual performance data to see like how your brain's performing. So that's something that that I've been trying to do to just kind of help people and I don't know, man. Obviously, I've I've had some concussions. I've been a snowboarder for a long time, and uh, so that's something that I hold personal to me. Like, 
you know, I've dealt with, with symptoms of head injuries for a long time. I, and I still do. I constantly do. It's, Seriously. it's a battle, anxiety, stress, I've trouble sleeping, mood swings, dude, all kinds of stuff. And it's just, I think a lot of people are dealing with that too. So, um, a big part of what my foundation is trying to do is to just provide help, provide objective information, whatever it is. You know what I mean? So what is that? I'm curious what the technology is. Is it like something that, um, like, is it like a, like a arm, like is it like an Apple watch or is it something that's like actually in the helmet of, of you or is it like a, yeah, I'm curious what, what kind of data it, it right. takes. Right. So this, this company is called Wadi Medical. Um, and they're out of Denver, Colorado. Oh, nice. They're, they basically make a headset mm -hmm. and it's a nine, a 19 electrode headset. Um, so it's basically just like a helmet with these little tiny electrodes on it. There's 19 different ones. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's basically, I don't know if you've ever seen like an EEG machine, but people have them on them when they go to like the hospital and it's like this, this skull cap and it has like all these little things oh, in it yeah. and all these little strings and yeah. cords and stuff. Yeah. It's basically a super, super advanced version of an EEG machine. Okay. Um, and the whole, the whole purpose of it is to just basically be able to track brain performance and cognitive function. So they're using it for trying to track like early onset dementia, early Alzheimer's, stuff like that, early just cognitive decline. Um, and then my foundation has just been doing studies using that as like a, a way to track people's brain performance um, after traumatic brain injuries. So I've been working with a traumatic brain injury support group out of Eagle, um, Colorado. And we've, we've been doing a study with another company called BrainTap and using that as the therapeutic device. Okay. So for our studies, what we're doing is providing a therapeutic device and then using the Wabi device to basically measure uh, brain performance to see if there was any benefit, any, you know, change basically. So um, it's pretty, pretty darn cool. And I think that's something that we're trying to focus on a lot more because there's not as many therapies out um, or there's people aren't talking about all the therapies that are out there mm -hmm. for people, you know, with, with brain injuries. So that's something that needs to be talked about more and just, um, that's something that needs to be spread around. So that's basically what we're trying to do is spread awareness about, you know, the stuff that can help you track and, and help your, your brain health. So, so do you have to have a baseline for it to understand like what, what went wrong? Like, cause I know for example, in, in modern day concussion yeah. testing, you, you have to have like some sort of baseline and then they, then when you, then you come back and do the test after you hit your head, then like they, or that's how they're able to see. So is it something like that, but it's actually more like, objective data versus you answering questions yeah right so for example like you were saying the baseline that they get now for the concussion protocol is just basically a bunch of questions mm -hmm. not, um, on how you feel it's all subjective information which is important too but you want to have that objective side of things also so mm -hmm. yeah what what this device basically does is you know if if you get a baseline before you start your season god forbid you hit your head or something like that Happens. You can basically track um, your brain's performance until until it, it you know gives you the confidence from the data you receive to to feel good to go back out and snowboard. So I did that. I used the device this year when I hit my head in Mammoth because I ended up getting a concussion. I just hit my chin on the snow really hard and I like ended up biting my jaw and I ended up getting um, a bunch of symptoms from that. So I immediately was just like, oh man, I don't know what's going on. I feel crazy and had concussion symptoms, talked to the doctor and everything, and he cleared me, said I was all good to go. I went back out, and it just was, like, impossible. I just, like, couldn't even stand. I had, like, the worst bird to go and just was feeling terrible. So um, I went home, and I had a baseline already, and so I was able to track my, my brain's performance until it basically was back to normal. And then I made the decision, like, all right, I feel good, good enough, and the dad is the dad is there to support it, so that gives me confidence, and that's kind of when I knew that I was able to go back out and shred. So, wow, so I feel like this something yeah. this, this is something that's gonna be super helpful not only for your sport but for like football. Like I think, hopefully, I mean, I hope this doesn't happen, but it seems like there's a lot of head injuries in in snowboarding, 
And like right now, like I feel like it's not super clear what the long term effects of it are because it's pretty it's a pretty new sport, right? Like it's not like it's not like it's been around for a hundred years like football has. Well I guess maybe has it been? But like not not like on the level it is. Like like you know, where right. where you're doing crazy tricks right. and hitting your head and whatnot. And so and I feel like, like a lot of football players now they're they're unfortunately seeing a lot of those effects of their the brain injuries they had you know twenty or thirty years ago. I hope that's not the case with snowboarding, yeah. but I think like a, a, a nonprofit like yours could kind of help help something like that happen in the future, right? Like where they yeah exactly yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of the direction that you know we're headed, especially because you know Wabi Medical they actually did a four year concussion study with the CU football team I see you Boulder and, and they ended up uh, proving that 38% of the people in the study 38% of the players went back out too early so they still had concussions when they went back out Wow. Um, and then CU ended up you know not even incorporating that into their program because they were basically proving that their athletes weren't safe and they were still hurt you know what I mean so it's tough as far as the football side of things go but in sports that people actually care about <laughs> like mental health. No, dude, like I'm serious. And, and it's, it's a problem. I saw there was a pro football player. I don't remember his name, but he was on ridiculousness the other day. It was Rob Dudek's TV show. And he yeah, was, yeah. he was, well, he made a joke about how he has like a, a million concussions and he was laughing about it. But like, these are problems that people, are like killing themselves over like i've had friends kill themselves over this so it's not funny you know what i mean yeah the problems that people derive from head injuries yeah you know end up being depression they end up being anxiety they end up being alzheimer's cognitive decline so basically what happens is you have all of these these so what happens is it's called neuro neurotoxicity yeah. is when basically you can ingest different neurotoxins and you want your neural pathways to be smooth so your neurons can fire mm-hmm. and get get to where they need to go when you have neurotoxicity the neural pathways are really bumpy mm-hmm. so like for example it would be a bunch of speed bumps in a, on a highway that you're going 80 on yeah like that you don't want that yeah it's not gonna work very well And so that's the problem is like, you know, after all these injuries, people are experiencing like serious neurotoxicity and they, they have really messed up neural pathways. So their, their neurons are not firing. And that's obviously just some of the problem. There's so much more to it, but it's a big deal. And, you know, football, they don't take it seriously. They don't. And it's, it's tough because, um, the technology that's coming out nowadays basically proves that. Um, they're all going back. They're all going back way too early. So, and that's that's you know basically what I'm trying to prevent in snowboarding and other sports is is doing that for you know 30 years and then having all these athletes that have CTE and PCTS when they're 50, you know, and they end up dying from um, brain disease because of they've hit their head so much. What's so, C- what's CTE and PTS for people who don't, who don't know? What's traumatic stress? Right. Right. And so, right. So these are, these are things that happen to people after constantly hitting their head over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Like post concussion syndrome is something that I've dealt with a lot. And that's just, um, kind of having symptoms that just linger after hitting your head. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, there's different levels to this stuff. T- TBI is a traumatic brain injury, but it's not the same thing as a concussion. Mm-hmm. You know, and a, and a concussion is not the same thing as a head injury. Um, and CTE, CTE, I'm going to have to, I got to do more research on it, but I'm pretty sure CTE is, is all these little subsequent hits to your head. So it's not necessarily like a traumatic brain injury, which would be like a, a one-time impact. Mm-hmm. It would, CTE is like, Constant. Something people develop after all of these little hits over time. Totally. So, and we might have to take that part out because you can't um, you can't quote me on that. I gotta figure <laughs> that out. But sounds right. Um, sounds right. But yeah, it's just crazy, man. And 
these things, they definitely need a lot more attention. Um, but it's crazy. It's There's technology now that is available for people to really help themselves out. So that's what I'm trying to do is just get the word out about it. Yeah, and you have a great platform to do that. There's, you know, we, we had a guy on, um, uh, his name's actually Guy, <laughs> Guy East, and he was a former professional cyclist. And he, oh, yeah. yeah, and he, um, he was telling me that, you know, he was, he was competing and he, there was, there was one of the events he went to, he was actually, he was training with Lance Armstrong and he went to basically one of these events in, 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 uh, in Mexico and stayed at this five star hotel and walked outside and he saw these people basically sitting in the street, like sleeping in their own, you know, feces. He was like, is this going to be the sum of my existence? Like, I'm just, you know, I'm traveling around the world racing to a white line on the road. And he left the sport for like five years and just traveled the world and started and and then he went back to the sport a whole new person, but he ended up starting this thing called Hope Sports, which he like basically built homes. And so um, I think actually the USA Ski and Snowboarding team did this. They 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 basically bring in uh, like uh, sports teams and they build houses for for people who are underprivileged. But I, that reminds me, his story reminds me a lot of you. Like he used this platform that you know he built. Um, to, you know, to work on something that was much bigger than himself to help a lot more people. And I think it's, it was super inspiring to, to hear that. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I actually met him. I actually met him a couple of years ago. Oh, I seriously? Went, I went, yeah, I went down to Mexico with the team and we built a house for a No family. way. That's funny. This, cu- this couple with a kid. Yeah. It was a really cool experience, dude. That was, it was crazy, man. That guy has a vision though. And, and what they've done is incredible. Hope Sports, shout out to Hope Sports because they have done some really cool stuff. Like they have really impacted people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's a great like, dude. He's 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 like outstanding. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, he's awesome. And yeah, man, I mean, that's the thing is, I think as we get older, we kind of just come to terms with like our reality. And my reality is is right now, at least that I'm I'm realizing that there's way more important stuff than kind of like. I don't know, man. I just want to. I want to be part of the bigger picture. I don't want to necessarily be. I don't know. I feel like people nowadays. Are, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm wandering, but I feel no, like people dude, nowadays are just really either self self consumed or just I don't know. Too busy, like trying to impress other people. Mm-hmm. When yeah, man, there's just so much, there's so many things happening right now, and our world is so crazy, and it's just like, it's a place where there needs to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more, like, compassion for others. I don't know. Yeah. It's just crazy. I just want to help. I just, yeah, I'm definitely at a point where I'm going to take a little bit more time, uh, a little bit more of my time and focus it towards helping other people instead of, um, helping myself. But I think in turn, mm-hmm. helping other people will really help me because, I mean, dude, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than helping people that need it. I mean, that's that's the whole reason I do it and that's like why we're starting to do this, so. Yeah, 100% dude, I respect that. Did you ever feel, I'm curious, did you ever feel like guilty for, for being so successful in, 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 uh, in, in snowboarding? Like, because like, okay, so. 100%. I, yeah, okay. I, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this. Hundred percent. I mean, yeah, guilty. I feel guilty for being so privileged, for sure. I mean, it's hard not to. It's hard not to, especially with with how how accessible, like seeing other parts of the world. You know, what I mean, like through social media, you're able to see so many different things, so many different perspectives. That, like, yeah, dude, when you're on on the, the higher end of the spectrum and you're you're that privileged, it's it's definitely hard to not feel a little bit guilty, but I think there's something to be said about really, um, using that, you know, Mm -hmm. like you, like if you were to put that in in the perspective from somebody who is not as fortunate, they they would want you to take full advantage of it. They wouldn't want you to be like, not, not really living it out. Like if you, you know, if you have a bunch of money and you're just like not using it, a, a poor person might be like, what's your deal? I would be using it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So like if, if you're fortunate and you have like all these great opportunities and like I'm not saying that I have money because I don't, <laughs> but if you have all these opportunities and you have, you know, privilege and you have the ability to go travel around with your friends and stuff like do it and, and take advantage of it and like live it up and don't feel guilty because dude, there's people that are in a situation that would kill to be doing what I'm doing or what you're doing or so, you know, it's just all perspective, but for sure. Sometimes I feel guilty about being so lucky, dude. I mean, I'm blessed. Yeah. Well, I never made it to the level that you did, but I was, I ran track in college, uh, at the University of Kentucky. And I, even then I felt guilty, like, cause I felt, I felt like I was just so I, very much the same wavelength that I was just so consumed in what I was doing. And it was like all about me. And, and like, in some ways I felt like kind of sick to my stomach about it. I was just like, just, you know, it's all about me. I'm just running around in circles. Like, literally, that's, like, what I was doing. And so, I don't know. It's just, yeah. it's weird. It's weird when you break it down to the simplest form. You're like, okay, like, why am I, like, why am I doing this? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, dude, that's the root of it, I think, for a lot of people. is like, that's where people get lost in it. But, you know, you see a lot of people fall off because they're doing it for the wrong reasons. If you can get back to the basis and kind of like why you started mm -hmm. I was telling you earlier that I I started snowboarding just kind of to have fun and not to to get really good you know what I mean so I never had like a a desire to quit because I wasn't as good as I want like as good as I thought I would be or something yeah but so would you ever go that, back do you think this is a professional snowboarding dude yeah I mean I'm not retired I still I still compete and stuff so oh, I just okay. basically resigned from the US team um, what? so I won't be traveling around with those guys anymore. And that's basically all that means. Oh, okay. So how come you, how come you did that? Why did you decide to do it? So basically decided to resign just to focus more time on my foundation. Oh, okay. just to okay. be able to, yeah, do more stuff like that. Cause I don't know, man, it's tough to like, as, as fortunate as I am going out to Europe right now, um, just would not be a good idea for, my foundation, probably for my snowboard career, for my mental health, for a number of reasons. So, um, I'm I'm not going to Europe this year, but dude, so excited for this season. It's gonna be gonna be a different one for sure. I think I'm coming in with some different energy this yeah. year. What's what's the, what's the competition look like? I feel like you're coming in with more like pure energy, like for the sport and for like I don't know, like you do you're, you're doing it for like the right reasons. I feel like thanks, bro. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it, uh, yeah, I'm trying to make it as organic as possible. I feel like, you know, I'm not, I don't want to talk bad about anything, but um, being a part of the U.S. team definitely creates a level of stress. Totally. That, uh, yeah. An expectation. Sorry, what was, what was your question before that, though? I, I totally spaced on it. Uh, no, I kind of forgot, too. I was like, I was kind of okay. in, yeah, no worries. <laughs> All good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I forgot what I was, what I asked before that. Yeah. So actually, what are the, what's the competition going to look like this year? Like, I suppose they're still, they're still figuring that out. Like, are they, yeah. are they going to have spectators or? Yeah. You know, I'm hearing no spectators is going to be kind of the consensus as far as watching. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I mean, everything that I've heard is that they're still trying to go forwards with comes in detour and um obviously burton us open is canceled which is super unfortunate um oh, it's like the first one in like 25 years or something they canceled no. oh. um but as far as everything else goes i think it's going forwards and yeah i think it's going to be a lot different too this year at least the events in the united states are going to be weird because i don't know if a lot of people are going to be coming from different countries and stuff you know what i mean so mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting, but we'll see. Well, most I think most of, most of the revenue from from I think the winter sports come from the TV rights anyway. So it's like it's not like a, the end of the world if you don't have spectators. I mean, maybe it makes it a little less exciting to have people cheer and whatnot. But I think from like a the exactly. business perspective, it'll be okay. So yeah, and who knows? It might even you know we might even have more attention now that it, it's easier to just kind of pull it up and watch true. instead of going. So. Very true. Who knows? Yeah. And uh, and what what's next for uh, for for your foundation? Like what what do you got what do you got planned in the next little bit? Are you looking to to partner with like USA Skiing snowboarding team? So I, I could I mean that seemed like a natural partnership to work with them. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know what? I'm actually working with the U.S. team right now. Um, it's it's kind of on the down low. Okay, and you don't have to have share. To, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to say if you don't want to. I'll have to get into that another time. But <laughs> but yeah, as far as as far as what's next for the foundation, um, man, just trying to help as many people as we can. I'm headed up to Aspen this weekend. I got to finish up my second study with the traumatic brain injury group. I got to finish scanning these guys. So basically. I go and get their their post uh, post study scans, and for the last two weeks, I've been using this therapeutic device. Um, so I'm gonna go and see how that helped them. If it did, kind of you know check the data out, look at the raw data, and see what their brain's doing, what their brain performance is like now compared to like two weeks ago. Um, seal that deal, get that study done. Basically, just trying to prove to those guys. Um, that there's stuff they can actively do to help their brain injury. Mm-hmm. It's that's the problem, man. It's like there's all these people dealing with brain injuries, and there's no real therapy that's available to them, mm-hmm. or there's no real treatment. Like they're not getting the treatment they need for some reason. And I don't know what it is, but because I don't know. And and that's the that's the huge thing about this this technology, this brain scanning technology, is the fact that. It's basically just going to change how accessible things are, yeah. making it so much more accessible to people. So, but yeah, as far as what's next for the foundation, just kind of smooth sailing, trying to help people, and I'll be setting up a GoFundMe here pretty soon that I'll be blasting on social media. And yeah, man, just working away. Dude, make sure to share the link with me. I'll definitely, I'll definitely share that on there or on my on my Thank social you. medias and whatnot. So. Yeah, thank you. I will for sure. We're, you, we're supposed to be funding a, a pretty big study here. It costs a lot of money, so I'm trying to raise some money for that. But dude, yeah, good you, stuff. You should reach out to um, to Tiger because I, I know he has a lot of the fundraising for for USA skiing snowboarding. So maybe he could. I don't know if you if you've been in touch with him, but I'm sure he would be. Yeah, a great resource. No, no yeah. doubt. That's definitely a thought that crossed my mind. Those guys are great over there. They yeah. do a good job of fundraising for sure. Yeah, he's a super super nice guy. Um, yeah. So, would you guys ever create like a product, like a, a product of, of your own? And um, and, and another thing I was gonna ask is, would like a nootropic? Because I, I know those are like super popular now. Does that kind of help brain injuries, or have you done any research into that? No, I haven't done any research into that really. And you, you were saying, have we thought about creating our own product? Product, as far as like a like, yeah, a, like so, a brain scanner or some or some sort of like because you, you're getting all this data and if there's gonna be, I'm sure you'll find something. There's a big need in the marketplace that you know some of the, right. people, the pieces that people haven't put together. Does that cross your mind? Yeah, right now, right now it's a great question and something that uh, I don't want to give too much away about. But <laughs> it, this space, this space is very very niche. It's uh, uh, I don't know, man. There's so much to do. There's so much. There's so much work to do that has to be done. But yeah, I'm definitely trying to develop my own uh, therapeutic device to help people with with their brain health and performance. There's there's a lot of um, research that has been done on audio and visual entrainment, audio and visual stimulation. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, but yeah, people are now basically combining audio and visual stimulation to make audio and visual brain entrainment, which is really, really good for your brain Yeah, for a number of reasons. Um, increased blood flow, increased neuroplasticity, which is that smoothing of the neural pathways. Um, and, and yeah, there, so that's the therapeutic device that um, I'm using for these studies, basically, to help these TBI patients out. They're using this device that uses uh, visual stimulation and audio stimulation to basically trick your brain um into being in a specific brainwave state Mm -hmm. so for example like you do a guided meditation session through this headset that stimulates you through your eyes and your ears with different sounds and different lights and stuff and your brain basically takes the frequency and latches onto it, and you are basically admitted into this different brainwave state specific to like going to sleep or waking up or being focused or whatever it is that you need to do. Um, but so yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool research out right now on 
on the uh, audio and visual stimulation, and that's something that's going to be huge, I think, in in the brain health space. So it's called yeah. As far as as far as that goes, it's like biohacking. That's what that's called. Okay, got you. So um, are you you're 100 percent self taught, right? Like you you didn't go to you didn't go to school for this. this. Is all just like following your intuition? Yeah, I actually I didn't even graduate from high school. Seriously, um, wow. that's something that not a lot of people know. Yeah, I ended up ended up having just to get my my general education diploma when I was going through high school. I had to drop out just because of traveling so much, and that was kind of right when snowboarding started to take off for me. So yeah, well, I should respect that. I mean, like, I mean, you probably learn. I think you learned a lot more about yourself and about like life traveling the world than sitting in a classroom in in Colorado. So props to you, dude. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I think there's a lot of different ways to learn for sure. Yeah, and, yeah. Experience, experience is a good one. So. Well, and I think like now you're not t- like I think a lot of people who graduate from university or high school for that matter they feel so well, maybe not so much high school college for sure they feel so um, like they have to I don't know like they have to follow like they can't follow their intuition I don't know I feel like it's much harder for them to in a lot of ways like they, oh yeah it's, it's very by the book very specific yeah there's just rules that you have to follow and that was something. Um, that I struggled with. I was never good at following rules. And I was a big part of why I was like... We're cut from the same cloth on that. <laughs> yeah. School thing wasn't for me. Rules are rules, but... Nice. Cool, bro. Well, I know, yeah. you, got a, I know you got a call here in five minutes, so um, I'll let you bounce. But thanks so much for taking the time to chat about your, your career and your, your nonprofit. I know you're going to kill it in both. I'm actually excited to see you on, on the slopes this year. So, uh, and let, let us know if there's anything we can do to help out with, with the foundation and, and, and spreading the word. We'll, po- we'll post a link to it in, in the, in the uh, video here, but uh, yeah. Thanks so much for coming dude, on, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I'm stoked you're doing this. This is really cool. It's, it's awesome to see somebody using their platform for, for good as well and just dude, being active with it. So props to you and thank you for having me on, man. I'm stoked. Stoked we got to chat. It's been a minute. I know, dude. It's been too long. It's been too long. It's been too long, bro.